The story as old as time is the out-of-nowhere late-round quarterback taking over and leading the team into a new era. Tom Brady, Dak Prescott, guys who were nobodies suddenly becoming some of the best in the league. Oftentimes it's injuries that spur this action, not often is it two of them, but that's the case with the 49ers young rookie Brock Purdy. Purdy has become ultra-relevant after leading the 49ers to a 4-0 record, and he'll have to deliver a Super Bowl-caliber roster to the Super Bowl. The 49ers' offensive firepower is elite, their defense is elite, so sit back while we break down if Purdy is capable of leading them to glory. The first thing when breaking down his film is how evident his poise is. He's not the most physically talented in terms of arm strength, but he's acted like he belonged the moment he stepped onto the field. Coming in mid-game against Miami's defense of all defenses is arguably the most challenging to do in the entire league due to their exotic scheme, but on just a handful of plays against what is right now the toughest coverage to attack in the entire NFL, Purdy showed why he has the potential to stick. The Dolphins love running this atypical coverage, which we've broken down before, called empty cover zero rain. Typical cover zero means there are no deep safeties, every cornerback is one-on-one, -on -one, and the defense can bring one more rusher than the offense has blockers, so they get a free rusher. But what makes Miami's version more exotic is they drop out D-linemen if they are blocked. When offenses attack typical cover zero, they usually want to get the ball out quick and underneath since there is lots of space in this area, so that's why Miami's version is so deadly. They still get an unblocked rusher, the worst thing that can happen to a quarterback, but also get to defend space that typical cover zero doesn't. They use it against damn near every offense in the league, and you can sure as hell bet they used it against Jimmy, and they used it well, and you can sure as hell bet they'd use it against a rookie quarterback who was just a hair away from getting undrafted. Purdy showed his poise in handling empty cover zero rain and displayed each of his attributes when being thrust into a brutal situation. The first time the Dolphins use it against him, on 3rd and 5, he shows his poise by quickly audibling to a screen. This is one of the best ways to beat cover zero, since it's a quick pass against the blitz. If the receiver breaks a tackle, there's nobody else, since there are no deep safeties. But Miami practices against screens when playing empty cover zero rain, since that's one of the main beaters. Still, for Purdy to have this command of the offense, making audibles, without having any idea he'd be playing today, plus as a rookie, is pretty damn impressive. Then, on the next example, a few minutes later, it's 3rd and 10, and now he shows off his athleticism to evade the free runner. He's no Pablo Sanchez freaky level athlete, but he is one of the lowest pressure to sack rates in the league, meaning when he's pressured, he's almost never sacked. The Dolphins are still playing empty cover zero rain with no deep safeties, but because it's third and ten, they can kind of play off deeper since the first down line is right here, even though they're still playing man. The idea on this play is to get Purdy to drift back a bit and wait for Brandon Ayuk to clear those D linemen dropping back underneath, and then nobody will be there to stop him. But free runners in the NFL don't just take their time moseying to the quarterback, and Javon Holland doesn't either. Purdy is looking at Ayuk and waiting, but also has an eye on Holland, makes a move, and shows off another one of his strengths, which is throwing on the run, even if he doesn't pick up the first down. On the next drive is when everything changed, and when I was watching live, I literally jumped out of my seat. On another 3rd and 10, once again knowing the free runner is coming, Shanahan installs a play that shows Purdy's toughness. Just like the previous play with three receivers up top and Kittle at the bottom, Shanahan sees that with each defender one-on-one, -on -one, and the D-lineman dropping into the underneath middle area, there is an exploitable space deep over the middle that can be attacked. If he runs everybody outside to keep these three defenders away from the middle, there's only this defender one-on-one -on -one versus Kittle. I will say, it's pretty freaking hard to attack deeper down the field with Jalen Phillips screaming literally untouched off the edge, but Shanahan knew that Purdy could do it. Now, just because it looks like the Dolphins are playing empty cover zero rain, and even though they have been, doesn't mean that's exactly what they're doing. Purdy knows that despite all the signs telling him they are, like each defender seemingly manned up and the rest stacking the line, cornerback Xavier Howard could still drop into some sort of cover three zone type deal and Kittle's rat would be dead. So while Purdy knows he has 6'5", 260, 458, 40 Jalen Phillips running right at him, he still has to check Howard, and based on all the context clues he's gotten, has to just assume Kittle will be open without really looking at him. It's just incredible. And speaking of incredible, I think it's time to give a shout out to my friends at Underdog Fantasy. 
They are a fantasy football app that I'm extremely excited to work with since I've been using them anyway for the last several years. Their games that I've been playing the most recently is their Pick'em games, where you select two to five players and bet their over-under stat for that game. You pick five and win, that is 20 times your entry in just one night. You can choose any game as long as it's in the slate. I'll take a few unders, give me J. Jeff on the over, but Chase under, Mahomes under, Ritter under, whatever you want, you can choose any prop and make your pick. All you do is put in just these five picks, bet $40 or however much you want, and boom, if those hit, that is $800. As long as you choose any player in the slate, you can play whatever and whoever you want. It's easy, it's simple, you can win a lot of money. Use my promo code Rollins to get a match deposit of up to $100, so you put in $100, it instantly turns into $200, that's promo code Rollins. So, back to Purdy, what's really struck me is how quickly and comfortably he's fit into this offense right from the get-go. He doesn't have great arm strength, so it's critical that he plays on time and in sync within the offense. Footwork, eyes, when those are synced up together, you'll get your receivers the ball when it's designed for them to get the ball within the context of the play and progression. He has to play within the system to be productive, and when he has, he's been great. Here he goes all the way right to left and lands on what's really his fifth read, which you shouldn't have to do in the low red zone inside the five yard line. You can see him start to the right with Debo and Jawan Jennings covered, then goes to Kittle, not open, Ayuk, not open, and lands on McCaffrey, who actually drops what should have been a tut. From the tight, we can see the importance of playing with in structure since he actually looks to Ayuk to affect the underneath defender Bradley Chubb. With loose footwork or scrambling within the pocket, there's no chance you can manipulate defenders with your eyes and body unless you're operating within the system. Then he comes back to McCaffrey with the back shoulder. Watch how his footwork has him ready to throw wherever he looks. Every step is smooth and puts him in a ready position to make a throw whenever he needs to. He's not hanging on anybody for too long, he's on to the next read right away, and playing with in structure allows him to do next level quarterback things like move defenders with his eyes. Then, on the very next play, they use the same formation, but now we're just trying to exploit the space that was opened initially in the Dolphins' defense. And on time, with the right footwork, he fires it in there. The only issue is that, starting with his third game against Seattle, and then against Washington, some of the footwork and technique started to get a little sloppier. I believe since he's prone to using his legs to get out of bad situations, that makes it difficult to maintain comfortable, quiet, sound footwork in the pocket, and we started to see some of that go away. This made him a little more erratic and inaccurate, and began to turn one of his strengths into a weakness. When your feet start to go haywire, your reads become more limited since you're out of sync. Purdy's excelled getting through his reads and finding the right receiver who's open, but when his feet go, his process goes with it, and he doesn't progress through his reads as well. This is 3rd and 11, and the Seahawks are playing quarters coverage with four deep defenders. The 49ers have three receivers to the right, and then the flanker X to the bottom, and Purdy has to know defenses love to push their weak safety to help the three receiver side since there are more threats. Just looking at this pre-snap, yes, Jennings could cut across the face of the strong safety on the post, but especially knowing that Ray Ray McLeod is the ISO receiver, defenses won't respect him and are going to push towards the three receiver side. Quarterbacks typically start their progression with the weak safety, since he's most likely to accurately give away what the defense is running. Other positions can get away with disguise a little bit more. But looking at the stripe on the quarterback's helmet, which tells us where he's looking, Purdy never even peeks him, and with McLeod's dig the better option, Purdy blindly throws it into traffic. It will be worrisome if he can't calm back down and get his timing and rhythm back into the vibes of his first two games against the Dolphins and Bucks. But from a pure talent standpoint, there are obvious times in the game where his arm strength limits the offense. Defenses are daring him to throw the big post over the top. It's all over the film. They're using their post safety, who's supposed to cover, like, post routes, but Purdy either can't hit him or is just too scared to throw him. I was very excited watching him against the Dolphins and Bucks. I thought he came in with terrific poise and showed his toughness in the Miami game, played great against the Bucks, and then things have become shakier in the last two weeks. He's still 4-0, and the 49ers have looked great, but watching the previous two games, based on the regression in his footwork and clear issues with his arm strength, there are some serious concerns. For what he is, he's been incredible, 
But if we're looking at this through the lens of can he win the Super Bowl with a stacked on stacked team, the answer is I don't think so. No matter how good this team is, it will come down to the quarterback, and I can't help but think back to the 2019 year where the 49ers carried Jimmy through the playoffs, but then when they needed him to make just one throw, the big post, Jimmy couldn't make it. The Brock Purdy story is incredible, and he's gone from irrelevant to more relevant than ever. The fate of the 49ers season rests in his hands, and if he can recapture his play from the first two starts and build off of them, well, the 49ers are winning the Super Bowl. This is